Welcome to the ADF Insider Essentials series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks, and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration, you will see how to debug applications using the ADF source code, and I'll also give you some tips for diagnosing application issues. This presentation is part of a series on debugging techniques. In this first part, I'll cover how to request and install the ADF source code, debug using the source code, and enable diagnostic logging to narrow down application issues. The ADF source code is available for customers that have a current support contract. It is not open source, but available source code provided expressly for the purposes of debugging. Without the ADF source code installed, debugging and coding are limited. For example, parameter insight shown here, which is accessed using control shift space, only shows data types for an ADF method if the ADF source is not installed. With the ADF in source installed, however, the parameter names are also displayed in the code editor. Without the ADF source, Quick Javadoc also isn't available, so pressing Control D doesn't display Javadoc for the ADF methods. But with the ADF source, Quick Javadoc gives me a detailed overview of the method in the ADF class. In this case, the prepare view objects method of oracle.jbo.application module. Finally, without the ADF source, when you right click on an ADF method in the code editor and choose go to declaration, the editor will simply show the method stub from the decompiled class. With the ADF source, however, go to declaration takes you to the actual method implementation where you can set breakpoints, watch variables, and just generally be able to more comprehensively debug issues. To request the ADF source code, you simply open a service request at My Oracle Support. You indicate the exact JDeveloper and ADF release that you are working with, 11.1.1.3 or 11.1.1.4, for example and you'll be sent a legal agreement for signature. Once the legal document is signed and returned to Oracle, support will provide you with a download link for the ADF source. Once you have the source, the next step is to import it into JDeveloper. In the Tools menu in JDeveloper, choose Manage Libraries and create a new library for the ADF source and provide the zip file that you've downloaded as the source path. You can then add this library to any projects that you need to debug. Let's take a look at how to do this in JDeveloper. So here I'm using JDeveloper 11.1.1.4. I have the source code, but I haven't added it to JDeveloper yet. So I'll go to Tools, Manage Libraries, and add a new user library. I'll name it ADF Source and I'll supply the source path as the zip file that I received from Oracle Support. And now I've got the ADF source installed. And if I want to add the source with a particular project, I can open up the project properties and add the library to the project. Now I select ADF source and the source is available to me in this project. If I press control minus, I can type in just a few characters of a class name that I'm looking for. And this will do a case sensitive search, in this case application module impl. And I can open up that from the ADF business components package. Now the license agreement that you sign doesn't allow any changes or redistributions of this class but I can certainly use it for debugging. A good tip for debugging an ADF business components application module and its methods is to create a sample client. So I'll go ahead and create a class for that. I'll name the class summit client and generate a main method. Now there's a shortcut that's available to insert a code template that accesses the application module and its view object instances. That's available by typing in bc for j client and pressing control enter. 
You can also create your own template, and this is all available in Tools Preferences. So if you have common code that you use in your application, you might create your own template, like I've done here. I added my code by typing test client and pressing control enter and this gives me a little more code that's useful for printing out rows from a view object instance. So now I changed the app module template code to point to the correct application module and view object for this particular project. And this test client would run and provide me with the rows for this view object. Now since I have the ADF source code installed, I can also type am dot and look for methods I might want to know more about. In prepare view objects, for example, I can see the parameter names and types and I can see the quick Java dot for that method. Additionally, I can right click find view object and choose go to declaration. And this takes me right into the find view object implementation in the application module Java file from the ADF source. If I do a control minus to navigate to a new class, I can search for view object impl, and I can use the find or structure window to navigate within the class. Another shortcut is to use control shift back quote, and this brings up a case sensitive search dialog. So if I want to search for bind parameters for a collection, for example, I type in a few characters and then click to navigate to that method. Since this is the source code that we're looking at here, I can set breakpoints and step through the code. So if I set a breakpoint and run the sample client in debug mode, I'll debug the application. And I've stopped at my first breakpoint in the ADF source, so I can step through or step over this code and I'm obviously seeing all of the data values and what's happening in the oracle.jbo package. If I go ahead and execute through the breakpoint, I see that my sample client prints out the name and ID of each row in the customer's view object. So you can see how using the ADF source gives you a much more comprehensive look at what's going on in the application. Another technique that is helpful for debugging is enabling diagnostic logging. ADF diagnostic logging allows you to see all the details about ADF business components methods, arguments, SQL queries, etc. You enable diagnostics for a run configuration, so you can either create a new configuration or edit the default run config. You specify the diagnostic options in the Java options field of this configuration editor. And for example, the most common setting is minus D JBO dot debug output equal console. You might also wish to increase the number of lines displayed in the log console of JDeveloper or send the logs to a file. Let me show you how to do this. Diagnostic logging is set for a particular project, so I can go into the model project and edit the default run configuration to specify the Java option minus D JBO dot debug output equal console. Here I'm also specifying that the function output is displayed to see which method was called, and I can also see the number of milliseconds since the last method was called. Now when I run the client, I'll see a lot more information than without diagnostic logging enabled. If I double click the log to maximize it, I'll see the number of milliseconds elapsed, the class name dot method name, and the line number that's being executed, and I can even see the full SQL statement that's being run, which is very useful for debugging wrong data type of issues. Additionally, of course, I'll get any system out print length statements that I've configured for this client. So this gives you a great deal of information for understanding what the application is doing. If it's too much to handle, you can go to Tools Preferences, and under the Log Environment node, I can specify a directory to send the file to, or increase the number of log lines that are buffered. So in summary, importing the ADF source code into JDeveloper is very helpful for debugging purposes. The code navigation techniques and shortcuts that I've shown you should also help simplify the debugging process.
Finally, when you don't know exactly what is causing an issue in your application, enabling ADF Business Components Diagnostics can be helpful for determining the cause of an issue or simply identifying which methods are called. For further information, be sure to access JDeveloper's homepage on OTN at oracle.com slash technology slash JDev.